Hi there everyone, today we're talking about one of the huge names in astronomy, and I don't mean this person, Dr. Sean Prosser, head of the library here at the Royal Astronomical Society in London, although you are a big name in astronomy to me, Sean. We're talking about Galileo, and we're gonna show you something really cool, but before we do that, we're gonna show you something really cool, because to whet your appetite, we've got one of Galileo's classics, haven't we? We have, we've got the 1653 edition of Starry Messenger, a book that he first published in 1610. Sidereus Nuncius. Starry Messenger is pretty cool, cool sounding name. It is. It's the first published set of observations using a telescope. Galileo was not the first person to observe the moon or draw maps of the moon based on telescope observations. That was Thomas Harriot. But he was the first person to publish. In November 1609, he knew about telescope technology. He started using one. He carried out a series of observations over a few weeks and quickly published this. It's a pamphlet, basically, 49 pages. But he made these copper plates based on his observations of the moon. There we go. So this is like, you know, starting to see a lot more detail now on the moon. And you were telling me, and we're going to talk about this more, that one of the important things about Galileo was that he published. He was very focused on publishing his findings yeah. and that set him apart. Yeah, he was able to publish and that meant he gained patronage from the Medici family, for example, and that strengthened his ability to carry out more research you know, with, with better funding. He was able to show with these copper plates the geographical features of the moon, the valleys, the craters, the, the shadows. It wasn't just some smudgy thing in the sky. No, no yeah. exactly. All right. Now I've seen this before. I'm sure you have. He also used his telescope to look at one of the brightest objects in the sky after the moon, which is Jupiter. And here you can see He's used a huge O and some asterisks to show not just Jupiter, but what he thought were stars next to it. And night after night, during his observation campaign, here's Jupiter again. But the positions of the stars have changed. Now, the stars don't move. But yeah. yet we've got these little stars around Jupiter that are yeah. moving almost every night. So he had this fantastic insight that these were actually satellites. These were moons revolving around Jupiter. So that was more evidence of the solar system as you know, a, a place where physical laws were operating, where the whole solar system did not revolve around the Earth. They're now known as the Galilean satellites of yeah, Jupiter, yeah. the four, four famous moons around Jupiter. And here is the moment that Galileo himself is publishing his finding of the satellites that will yeah. one day bear his name, which is amazing to see. This book is amazing, but that's not what you want to show me today, is it? So watch this, Sharp. This is Galileo's book about sunspots. It's called History and Demonstration of Sunspots. Yep. And he's written it not just to, to publicise what he's observed of these strange markings on the sun's surface, but also to put it out there that other theories that are being shared by astronomers like Christoph Scheiner are not correct. This is now quite a familiar thing to fans of astronomy, seeing the face of the sun, not as this perfect white or yellow thing, but with these markings all over them. We see them all the time now. But this was this was cutting edge back then. This was, was. like, this was new. It's a really beautiful series of engravings, starting off in July 1612. And if I turn the pages, you can see the mm. way the sunspots move across the surface of the sun. So what have we got here then? He's saying in the preface to this book, by the way, here's another new observation that I'd like to share with you. I was looking at Saturn through the telescope and at first it seemed to have two moons stuck very close to the body of the planet and mm. had a look at it another day and it seemed to have two ears. So this is the first verified observation of the of what we now know to be the rings of Saturn. So at this point Galileo doesn't know they're rings, no. he just knows there's something, there's some ears or something yeah, stuck yeah. to it and he's, I guess he's thinking just in case this turns out to be a really big deal, yeah. I want everyone to know yeah. I saw him first. Yeah. And there it is, there's the proof that he saw him first in black and white. And I mean, that second image there is very Saturn-esque. You would look at that and say, oh yeah, yeah Saturn, yeah. yeah. So even though this book's about sunspots, he's chucked this in the intro, yes. you know, just in case. If I'm gonna have something big published, I may as well pop this in as well. Isn't that exciting to think like, you know, I mean, Saturn's so famous now, we take yeah. it for granted, but to think there's one of the most famous people in history and he's seeing the rings for the first time and writing it down and publishing it. And I'm wondering about the conversations he had with the printer, okay? 
I, I needed to make a special figure just like this. I, I don't think that there was already a, an eared satin. No, they didn't have that emoji face. back then, no. did they? No. <laughs> yeah, this book has not been fully read because the pages haven't been cut. Look at that. People like us through the ages have been like, OK, let's see the sunspots, but we're not going to read the bit about the discourse against doves. Did you see that, James? Some of these pages here are still stuck together, so yeah, they've, ne they've never actually been read. Well, this is very special to get to see, so thank you for showing it to us. You're welcome. I can't help noticing there's another object here kind of bolted on, and this is the Earth, is it? Yes, it's a, it's a tiny scale model of the Earth, obviously much, much closer to the Moon in this um, apparatus than it is in real life. And, and smaller, obviously. It's very much smaller. It's just a, a way of showing the movement, the motion, and the, the features of the Moon. 